This is Kena Bridge of Spirits. I actually downloaded it a long time ago, uh, but I tend to forget what's on my PS4 uh, while I'm playing on my Xbox Series X. And so it just kind of sat here languishing for a long time without me ever trying it out. So uh, I'm kind of embarrassed about that because it actually looks like one of the prettiest games I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, if you watch the trailers, this thing looks gorgeous. It looks like it came out of, I don't know, uh, Pixar or something like that. It's just really, really beautiful. And it's got the most adorable little dudes in it. Um, so we're definitely going to have to play this. I don't know the first thing about it. Let's grab the middle difficulty level. And sure, sure, that is a level of darkness that I accept. Let's find out what this game is. So MacMurt says, isn't this that cute Souls-like game? Uh, I have heard that it's a little Soulsy, which might mean I might have trouble connecting to it. We'll have to see. Unique wooden masks are carved to honor the dead. Placed in sacred shrines, these masks gradually return to dust, symbolizing the spirit's peaceful journey into the next life. Not all spirits can travel this path alone. Struggling with tragedies from their past, they linger and become dangerous. Masters called upon to help these trapped and violent manifestations are known as spirit guides. Is that what I am? Oh, is this like Stranger Things where lights light up whenever a spirit is near? Okay, press L1 to pulse. Oh, all right. Well, of course I have to do what I always have to do, which is invert my camera. Is that here? Do do do. There we go. Much better. I assume I'm supposed to go this way. It was right in front of me. Ah, ghosts. I assume I'm friendly to ghosts. I am the bridge of spirits, after all. Okay, they're, it feels like they're telling me to go this way, but what else is in this room? Hold on. That looks like some kind of high cave. I don't know if that's just a light source or if it's like I'll actually get up there one day. I'm not going to worry about it. I guess I'll just follow the golden path or in this case the sapphire path oh there's a bunch of <laughs> bunches of ghosts can I like go in the water yes ooh I can swim this place seems important what am I what am I triggering Okay, there's a there's a light up there. Is there something I can do with that light? Oh, okay, I can pulse it. Interesting, they did not tell me that. I just had the one thing I had ever done before, and I did it, and it worked. So I guess pulsing activates nearby crystals and whatever those crystals do. Oh, hello. Why have you come? I sense suffering here, spirit. Do you need help? You know nothing of suffering. This is my home. My village. Turn back, spirit guide. Okay. So I can attack this guy. Oh, or just get attacked. Uh, I hit the wrong button. I hit L1 instead of R1. <laughs> Let's try R1. Yeah, that works way better. Okay, so he, he was recovering, so I hit him with... R2. Wait, he's back? Is that the same dude or a different dude? Oh, gotta dodge. 
Oh, hey. I just right clicked and I can mark a guy. Oh, I can only mark someone who's on screen. I have to get them on screen first before I mark them. I do appreciate dodge being on circle. That's kind of the most natural place for me to have it. Okay, so far, yeah, it's got some traditional Souls-like controls, but it's got also like a pretty responsive dodge. And the enemies were, you know, reacting to my hits. And I, I was able to sort of dominate the combat, which is often not the case. Uh, one of the things that makes it difficult for me to play Souls-like games a lot of the time is the fact that sometimes they don't let you dominate the combat. You, you, you mostly have to be reactive. Um, and that actually is a little bit... My, my inclination is always just to go on the offensive. You know, the best uh, defense is a good offense uh, in my instincts. And so needing to actually consciously defend as my primary activity is a little tougher. Okay, so I just... I just triggered these two Stella with my pulse ability. Now I can stand on this. That reveals another door opening deal. And here we go. So Macmurt says that uh, he's heard that the um, the cuteness of this game is deceiving, that actually it's a very sort of tactical, cerebral combat game, uh, which makes sense. If people are comparing it to Souls-likes, that's the kind of game those are. This really is gorgeous, though. I mean, just look at the way that the lighting worked here. Let me go back down again. Like, you can see you've got this sort of... Um, high dynamic range thing going on where it's like this is this really you know bright overwhelming light it kind of blooms around her head and it's overwhelming but then at, it gradually transitions as you come up into just sort of natural really natural lighting but your character can be as cartoony as you want but if the lighting is really natural it still gives it this like I don't know, almost touchable feel. Oh, wait, who are you? Oh, ah! Oh no, those children dissolved! What's going on in this world? Right, so a little dude went into a rock. Do I actually know where that rock is? Can I find that rock? Nope. All right, I've got a pressure plate. Doesn't work yet. I can light some stuff. Oh wait, what are you? I can collect this. Here, little guy. 
<laughs> Am I okay? Find the rot. Search for more rot in the- wait, wait. This guy is called rot? This little guy. This little guy is called rot. That's ridiculous. How could something that looks like that be called rot? Okay. Got jumps and double jumps. Any secrets in here? Nope. This is just- ah. Uh, this is... Oh, they're running away from me. Where'd they go? Going that way? Okay. I was going to say, this is one of the most classic early game level design things you will ever see. Your destination is over here. You have to jump, double jump to get across it. But if you miss, you land in a thing that has a ramp back to where you were before. Like, this is actually one of the more naturalistic versions of this. Because you see this in, like, every platformer. <laughs> Gives you some kind of place like this where you learn how to double, how to clear something that requires a double jump, or even just you know whatever any 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 place where there's a chance the player won't really get how to clear a gap. You always put something like this in here, but this is actually one of the more naturalistic sort of like real feeling locations that I've seen doing that kind of thing. Okay, so hello, we've got a little little rot guy here. I can collect him? Wait, okay. I have two different ones. Okay, there's there's five of these that I need to find. So wait, are they all different from each other? Or do I just have a special one? Is my first one special? The one who's sitting on my shoulder, is he just a special one? But the rest of them look more like this? So the little kids went the other way. I'm just going over here because when you're playing a video game, you always go the wrong way first to see if there's secrets. Okay, did they go high or did they go low? Looks like there's a platform over there to stand on. Let's see. It's up here. Okay, so the little guy is calling my attention. Okay, so do I just do I just notice these rot based on where my little guy goes, or is there something else about that place that was supposed to call my attention to it? So they're following me around like Pikmin now. So does that mean I'm going to be using them like Pikmin? Hi, Benny. Oh, this is where they went. Okay, there's a purple glow over here. Okay, so purple glows, that's where hidden rots are. Because, and my little guy will run over and call attention to them. But I can watch for the purple glow to try to find them in advance. Director Cosmic asks, does anyone like road trips? In my opinion, they're long, boring drives with some fun every now and then. Yeah, I, I don't think... There aren't a lot of people who like road trips. And I think that if, if you like road trips, usually I think that means that you're either, like, that the reason you're going... like Okay, so I can imagine going on a road trip where I'm going through, like, a beautiful landscape and, like, like the journey itself is just full of sights to see and things that I want to look at, and I actually enjoy the trip. Um, I can imagine doing that. Most of the trips that I go on, though, are, like, to visit family in a particular destination. And the way there isn't the interesting part. It's the destination that's the interesting part. And so the longer the road there takes, the more difficult it is. Um, I, I have an advantage, which is that my wife actually really prefers to drive. Uh, she really, really likes driving uh, the car. And so um, usually when we're on a long road trip, my job is to... Uh, keep the kids from freaking out which you know as they've gotten older that's become less and less of a problem when my son was one year old he would just scream the entire time and it was the worst job now he only complains every 10 minutes or so uh so in between that i get to watch movies on my ipad and so i basically try to i try to deal with the road trip by acting like i'm not there 
Okay, so I didn't actually... So this, okay, this looks like a vaguely hostile area. It's making me nervous. Let me stand over here. Okay. What happens? Okay, that light over there shines. Let me, I mean, sorry, that crystal over there reveals itself. Oh, interesting. Okay, so my pulse can chain from one crystal to another. I thought that I had to reach the destination crystal with the range of my pulse, or that my pulse just touched everything I could see. But that is not the case. My pulse will touch a crystal, that crystal will pulse and touch another crystal, etc. All right, well, let's see what's up here. I mean, it's a waterfall. There must be a treasure behind it. That's how video games work. Oh, check this out. Got some little dude over there. Hello, little dude. All right, was that is that what what I think this entire place is just to get that little guy, but look how much care and love they put into this place though. They got all these like Stella which I I wonder like would I find these exact same rocks somewhere else? Like, did they just did they just make a collection of rocks and then this artist grabs them, stuffs them into the into the place, you know, arranges them so they look really nice, or was some of this actually custom made for this area? You'd imagine the tree branches, probably custom made for this area, because they're I don't know, but I don't know. Artists can do wonderful things sometimes with just like prefabbed objects. You'd be really surprised how many unique looking landforms and things like that in the game are actually just made from the same preset pieces of, as everything else just rotated and, and and sort of merged with each other in different ways okay i'm gonna tentatively sneak over here this place seems a little scary collect more rot to purify this dead zone heart okay it's like a, it's like their version of a plague heart i guess all right well I'm glad it didn't kill me when I got close. That was the thing I was worried about. I think this is a place I haven't gone yet, right? Have I not gone here yet? Ooh, ooh, a chest! <gasps> My first chest! Oh, another rot. So that's five rot. Oh, so I've leveled up. And now they can perform more actions. Your team of companions has grown, and you have one rot action available. Press square to send them to objects in the environment. Collect rot to level up and gain more rot actions. Okay, so I think that means we can destroy the, uh, what's this called? The plague heart? What's it called? This thing. What's this? Oh, so now I've got an icon on it. I can be like, boink. And then I can pulse it to destroy the dead zone heart. When something is called a dead zone, I just, I think that I should find Anthony Michael Hall inside of it. Or Christopher Walken. Um, okay, I can grab ledges. Good to know. Did I miss anything down there? I and mean, they were counting up the rot, so I'm assuming there's no more secrets for me to find. Oh, but my okay. I like my little. Check out what my little guy does. If I if I move far away from a point of interest. Oh gosh, that wasn't what I actually intended to do. Let <laughs> let's um let's try that again. Okay, he's on my shoulder right now. Let's watch him. Let's watch this little guy and see what he does. Oh, by the way. Oh, check this out. So the little guys, every time I cross something that they don't have like a behavior or an animation to, to, to cross, they just, let's watch them. What do they do? Oh, I can't see them on the ground. Oh, but they just like, basically just teleport, but they have a little teleport animation. You know, one thing I joked about wanting to do, in State of Decay 2, when you have a follower and you just leave them really far behind somehow, they teleport to be closer to you. And, you know, that, that teleportation, it's... It doesn't look realistic, you know, they just sort of pop in. Um, and part of me 
really wanted to kind of advocate for us to animate them teleporting in. Even though that's ridiculous. Um, but I was like, well, you know, if they're going to pop in anyway, that's not a thing you do in the real world. Why not have them crawl out of the ground or something like that nearby? But I wasn't serious about it. Because actually, you know, players will forgive a certain amount of popping and everything because they know they're playing a video game. But if you animate it, that means that it's actually happening in the world. It's not just a game conceit. So anyway, so I got this little guy on my shoulder. I get close to this point of interest and he pops up into the air and follows this arcing path towards the destination, so it really kind of helps me notice that the thing happened. Because one one fear that I would have with a system like this is you might just not notice that your guy left. But, okay, so let's jump onto this. Ah, so we can climb up this whole thing. I love that this, this really is just sort of a tutorial of the basics, but it's... All of it feels totally naturalistic. I don't feel like... Like, I don't feel like the game said, okay, buddy, time for the tutorial now. You'll get through it, I promise. You know, like, I just, I feel like I'm exploring this world and discovering this world at the same time that I'm exploring and discovering the character's abilities. Nobody put me into a training scenario. Enemies frighten the rot. Oh, this is our explanation for, like, the big red force field in a, uh, in a God of War battle. So the rot are scared of God into hiding. Attack enemies to build their courage. In combat, spend courage to perform rot actions. Okay. Courage drops can form in the world. Collect courage drops with your pulse or touch them to build up courage faster. Okay. Got it. So I need to pick up... So I need to fight these enemies. And pick up the courage that they drop. Which will give me my rot back. And I'll be able to use the rot to destroy, to destroy the heart, or bind enemies. And luckily, so unlike Pikmin, I don't have to send the rot individually. I just say, hey, do this, and enough rot will just go and do it. So, oh, hold L2 to aim, and then use it to bind it. Let's bind enemies first. Okay, so that enemy's bound, so they can't attack me. And then once I defeat them, I get my rot back. Oh, but am I, I'm out of courage now. You can see at the bottom, I've got this yellow gauge. Oh, this yellow circular gauge that builds up my courage. So this time I'm going after the heart. And I'm going to pulse it. And now the heart's gone. I think that means it won't be able to respawn these enemies anymore. Oh, crap. So I used a, I used a slow attack on that enemy and they preempted me. So I have to, oh, let's, yeah, go after that one and pulse it. Oh, I said pulse it. There we go. Okay, so I can see why somebody was saying that this was, that, that, I think it was MacMurt that was saying that the combat is tactical. And it's because not only do I have to like physically be fighting an enemy, I have to be keeping track of the courage that I'm building up to let me use my rot abilities. And I have to decide when and where to use the rot. So there's like, I've got to have two layers of thought going on. I've got to have the immediate reflexive, this enemy's attacking me, I have to dodge, I have to hit them, I have to preempt them, I have to avoid their attacks, whatever. That whole layer. But then I've got the layer of, when can I use my next rot ability and where should I use it? Oh, so these guys can move stuff? Um, oh, Carter JN says uh, they're playing State of Decay 2 right now, and they saw an original Xbox sitting next to a TV. Yeah, in general, uh, we have uh, basically, yeah, because, you know, we're, we're the game has always been published by Microsoft, and because, you know, we're owned by Microsoft, we can put Microsoft-related stuff um, in the game. But... Uh, we don't want to put just sort of the latest Microsoft stuff in the game, just because, I don't know, I think it would kind of date the game a little bit and just make it feel like, oh, just whatever Microsoft is doing, that's what they put in the game. It would feel a little fake, feel like it kind of it would push you out. And so we always go really old Microsoft stuff, like original Xboxes, because that feels a little bit more like, it's nostalgic. It's not, you know, trying to be current. It's, 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 it's doing something else. Okay, so you guys go over there. So, okay, so I'm just having them pick it up with Square. And then I can aim and tell them where to go once they've got it. Well, where do I want them to go? 
Oh, right here. I'm betting I want them right here. Oh, this is a lot of granular control. Oh, and then my little guy goes to the destination and the other rot follow. They've just got so much like diegetic UX here where it's like, yeah, they, they have some like, you know, HUD and crap they put on the screen. But a lot of what I'm doing is actually like being acted out in the world. Okay, let's try this again. Dang it, it's hard to, okay. My character's a little wild. It's hard to actually, there we go, stay on a small platform. And getting that kind of thing right is really, really difficult. It's like making a character feel fast enough that it's snappy to move them around, making them feel like their movements are convincing enough because they're animated well, and then also giving you the, the power to like stay on a tiny platform if you want to. Those are all things that, like, all of those goals have tension with each other and make it difficult to, uh, to, to, to to make the game feel good. It's very hard to get right. So this one might be a little bit, maybe they pulled a little bit away from the, um, make it easier to make sure you don't make mistakes, that you can sort of stand on a small platform and not screw it up. I think they might have set other goals as being more important than that. Okay, I stood that up. What was that for? Was that for something? Or was that just neat? Maybe that was just neat. Okay, stood up a cat. That stood up cat actually reminds me of the, uh, I think the only boss I ever beat in Elden Ring. <laughs> oh wait, triangle to open it. Ooh, I got something. Got some little crystals. Okay, I stood that thing up, what was, why? Why did I stand it up? Do I have a goal here? that I don't understand? Is there another place where I need to do more standing up of things? Okay, looks like I can do this. By the way, this looks like a game where exactly like the rate at which you hit the double jump might actually really be important. Like there's some games where if you hit the double jump you will eventually have the same arc of jump, kind of almost no matter what you do. But there's other, others where, depending on how you time out your jump, you can go further or higher uh, if you time the jump just right. This feels like it might be the latter. There's been a couple of times where I sort of missed things. Okay, well, I appreciate the little guy telling me where to go. So, yeah, I think... Here, let's, let's actually test that out. I'm just going to rapidly double tap my jump button. Okay, I just barely made it. And yeah, the game was really forgiving. But if I... Oh, wow, I actually... Ooh, that that felt a little wrong. I actually missed it despite looking like I should have made it. Oh, what's this? Well, I'm glad I missed it, actually, because I found this place? What was this place for? Okay, I got some more stuff. It opened this up. Oh, okay. Over there. Oh wait, that's the same. No, no, no. That's the same one I used to get up. So yeah, that's not anything. I'm not sure why I moved that. Was there some reason why I needed to be up here in order to guide that block, maybe? Or the game thought I needed it or would benefit from it? Okay, yes, you see, I failed the first time and succeeded the second time. This game is, oh, and that time I made it all the way across without even needing, needing the ledge. So the game is very sensitive when it comes to exactly how you jump and what you can make. Uh-oh, uh-oh, who's this dude? Is that the same dude from the beginning? Let me help you. I can heal these spirits and restore balance to the forest. I know you are kind. You sense the power that flows through this land, but you do not fully understand it. I mean, I know I don't. Not for long, buddy. This 
land can be healed, but you cannot stay here, spirit. You must move on. You are the one who does not belong. I will never abandon my people. That guy seems serious. But his name is Sprout? Okay, hold L, press and hold L1 to shield. Okay. Oh gosh, okay. Needed to anticipate that a little better. Okay. He is trying deliberately. Okay, let's. There, was that a parry? Or was that him? Okay, yeah, my shield, okay, my shield is on a meter. My shield's on a meter at the bottom. Let's try to time this right. That, okay, that was a parry. Okay. I don't have my shield meter. Does that mean I can't shield? No, I can. Oh, another parry. This time I'm gonna hit him with heavy attacks. Assuming... I don't actually know if heavy attacks are more powerful in the long run than short attacks. Like if you're spamming a heavy attack at an enemy, does that mean that you'll do more damage to them with it than you would with spamming light attacks? That's how I would set it up. Like have the sort of delay to get into it be longer. So oftentimes you want Light attacks. Anyway. You can come out. It's safe now. Sire, she cleared away the poison. The little guys can eat it. They love it. <laughs> My name's Kana. What are you two doing out here, alone in the forest? Don't worry about us. We've been here a long time and take care of ourselves. I can see that. You both look very strong. Do you know who that spirit was, with the horned mask? We don't know, but when he shows up, the girl's poison grows stronger. Hey, what are you doing here in the forest? I'm searching for the sacred mountain shrine. Can you take me there? If you want to get to the mountain shrine, you have to help us with something first. Our brother Tar was trapped deep in the forest. We need you to help him. Great idea, Saya. That'll be easy for her. Did you see what she did to that stick guy? Help us free Tar, and we'll take you to Mount Shrine. Woohoo! Come on, our village is this way. All right. Oh wait, I've got some more rot now. So now I'm trying to get up to 15 rot to unlock the next thing. Uh, I think that, uh, so in that first area, I collected every single rot that was available, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if, is the game set up so that I have to collect every rot and that's how I unlock my progress? Or is it going to start getting flexible where if I find all of the rot, like if, if I am diligent about finding it, I can unlock abilities earlier than someone who's less diligent. I'm genuinely not sure. I'm curious about how this is going to go. But we did just hit a, hit a really nice stopping point. Um, and so I think I'm going to take a little break from this episode and then we'll continue on in another episode. Let me catch up with the chat here, make sure that I haven't forgotten anything important. So, okay, when Sprout showed up, MacMurt was like, I am Sprout. Uh, so yeah, it, d it did have definitely some strong group vibes. I wonder if most of the enemies in this game are going to have some group vibes to them. Uh, Carter JN says, I usually just do light attacks in games. Yeah, so me too. Uh, I mean, it definitely just feels better to have something that, you know, 
that attacks very quickly um, and can sort of preempt enemies, take control of the battle. That always feels better to me, too. I'll usually only use heavy attacks sparingly if there's a really strong reason to do it. Like, if the heavy attack has some additional effect, like knockback, for instance, um, or if it is just, like, outlandishly huge amounts of damage next to a light attack, then I'll, I'll get excited about I'll try to create opportunities to use a heavy attack. There's a lot of games that don't really create those incentives, though, and, uh, and I can see getting into the habit of just doing light attacks all the time. Anyway, so yeah, let's wrap this up, but I am definitely going to uh, continue playing Kena Bridge of Spirits. I'm going to go find Taro, so uh, that'll be in the next episode, which I'll link right there.